Let's now look at the issue of low birth weight and ask whether cash transfers can help with that problem. Low birth weight is both a correlate and a cause of inadequate physical and mental development. But what to do about that? One policy option is simply to send cash to families or households which are relatively poor. The cash may help them afford better and more nutritious food, it may help them afford visits to the doctor, and it may simply make life less stressful, all possible benefits. In general, economists tend to be relatively sympathetic to the idea that if you want to help poorer people, just sending them cash is a good way to do it. A lot of economics has a kind of built-in implicit assumption that very often people are the best judges of their own self-interest. But what do the data show in this case? And how are the cash transfers affecting the welfare of the still unborn babies once they're born? To investigate this question, we turn to the nation of Uruguay, although the paper under consideration studied a poor report of Uruguay than is shown here. There was an Uruguayan program called PANES, and to sum up what that program did, it targeted the poorest 10% of households in the country, it was a temporary program running only for a few years. It sent to those families, in terms of U.S. dollars, about $56 a month, evaluated at the 2005 exchange rate, although in purchasing power parity terms, this actually amounted to about $103 a month, which is a fair amount of money. Finally, this study looked at data from individual beneficiaries, and since PANES was phased in in different locations at different points in time, we have natural variation in timing that will allow us to compare families receiving PANES payments with families which are not. It seems that the result from these cash transfers is actually some happier babies. For households receiving the cash transfers, the incidence of low birth weight is down about 10 to 15 percent. The average weight of the babies is up 23 to 30 grams, or about one ounce. And finally, there's a large effect for teen mothers. These are all good news. There are other interesting results in the paper. For one thing, in the households receiving the transfers, there is overall less smoking, even though there's more money around, and the authors speculate this may reflect the lower level of stress when the cash is arriving. There's also a lower level of employment. There's less of a felt need to work. This, again, is consistent with predictions from economics. Interestingly, marital stability seems to be up. This could, again, be a kind of stress effect that maybe there's now some more money to keep families together. And overall, out-of-wedlock births are down 2.1%. This is in contrast to a frequent stereotype that somehow welfare payments break up families. In this case, that wasn't what happened. Overall, the results from the cash transfers actually seem to be pretty positive. See also our other video on conditional cash transfers in the poverty section. This is only one example, but it's mostly a positive one. Our source is this very good paper, Do Cash Transfers Improve Birth Outcomes? and it's available online.